Space, the final frontier. So have you ever felt like a starship? Okay, as if you can boldly go where no man or woman has gone before. Anybody feel that way? Well, lately I've been feeling like a starship. It's been awesome. And, uh, and I've been boldly going into a whole new adventure. And that's why I'm standing here in front of you, because this is a huge adventure for me. And I'd rather look at it that way rather than saying I'm taking the risk or I'm getting in, you know, something like that, which it has a little base of fear in there. So I like to change words around. And we'll be talking a lot about conscious language today also. Because um, as we said before, when I was talking to you guys earlier, words carry a frequency. You know, they, you know, when we shift words, like when I was coming out at first with my coaching and everything, I said I was a, st a stress buster guru, right? And I was busting stress. And then all of a sudden, what came to me is I became the harmonizing facilitator. Wow, that felt so much better, <laughs> you know, rather than the stress. You know, I was focused on stress, not on harmony. So I decided it's time for me to focus on harmony. That's what I want to bring into the world. As a starship, I can take my community with me, right? You know, climb aboard. Let's go. All right, so join me now as we go on the adventure to see life in a whole new way. Harmonize your life with love because love transforms consciousness. And what this is about, too, is I'm starting a thing called the Center of Loving Consciousness. And um, I'm going to be offering my workshops, my coaching. Uh, I'm going to try to get a uh, once a month a spiritual movie group together so we can show some of these awesome movies that are coming out about you know our evolution and uh, so I have a lot of things going on and that's what this is set up to do is um, I really want to get this uh, information that I'm sharing out on the internet out there you know um, on my lovingconsciousness.com website and um, I'm really ready to share rather than step down, I'm really ready to stand in my truth and start sharing that there is other worlds out there and it's about time that we started seeing each other and honoring our differences, honoring our uniqueness and just loving each other for exactly who we are and loving ourselves. Harmonize your wellness, harmonize your life in 2012. So harmonize your life and begin adapting to change with ease. People who adapt to change with ease live a healthier, longer life with a greater quali quality of living. And guess what? That is a fact of life. So as I was saying earlier, um, change is the only constant in this universe. Change is the nature of who we are. What are we doing when we are resisting ourselves changing? Or we say, I hate change. You're saying you hate yourself. You know, we have to change. There's no, there's no way around it. We are, no matter what. So I'm writing a book right now called Changing with Ease Even During Difficult Times because in the last three years I probably I, I went through total financial devastation. I went through a foreclosure. I went through a divorce. I went through everything. I was homeless. I hit an elk, totaled my car. I was down to, first I was down to a horse trailer, a horse and my Vanessa, my van, my car. In December of last year I hit an elk and it changed my life. Totaled my car and um, you know talk about you know just allowing yourself to have faith and just be in a place of you know I kept saying to myself I'm safe, I'm secure, I'm supported and loved and on that was December 15th on December 26th I got a call from a woman who had been house sitting taking care of her pets you know she was also a massage client of mine and things like that she had gotten an accident and uh, tore her uh, damaged her knee and so she had to have knee surgery. So she calls me from the emergency room and says, Cynthia, I know you need a home, I know you need a car, and I need an angel. And can you come take care of me? If I had not, you know, I, I was right there. And I went to her and I've been living there since last year and now she's actually in Houston and I'm renting her house and it comes with the dog. So um, also through all that, I had an opportunity where I did meet someone who is my, um, my beloved, who we were totally in alignment with one another. When I met him, I knew it was something that was meant to be because 
Um, there were several things that showed up. Like an angel was saying, you know, here, here, here. Everything that I had, my heart's desire was right there. And one of the things that he does is he's an outfitter. And um, the exciting thing is, is 12 years ago, I went to COGS, Colorado Outdoor Guiding School. It was me and 18 men in the back country for four weeks. Horses, mules, and just me and 18 men for four weeks was amazing. I had the best time though, it was awesome. The reason why I went wasn't so much to learn the guiding and hunting and all that stuff. My reason was I loved horses and I always had, you know, had horses in my life because they have been another support and uh, they're a biofeedback tool. My horse has taught me so much about myself and you'll hear a little more of my stories in here. And, um, and my intention was to take women into the wilderness um, on horseback. And that was my dream 12 years ago. That's what I wanted to do. And, and I should change that word. That was my desire. That was what I chose to do. Well, because of all this change that I just went through, it took everything out of my life that was in my way from having my heart's desire. So when all of a sudden I surrendered, guess what? I didn't know how my heart's desire was going to show up, but I saw the end from the beginning. I wanted to be with women and teach them how to let go of interference and all the things that keep us from being the intuitive, wise women that we are. And a great way to do it is with nature. Women have forgotten how connected we are to Mother Earth. And so I'm so excited. I'm doing that. And um, I have a website called wildwomenwildernessretreats.com. And we're just switching over to WordPress and a bunch of other things. But um, we, I did, we had those last year was um, with the outfitting just outside of Crested Butte and in the West Elk Wilderness. And so we do put together custom trips for, um, you know, families and men and women and everything. But I do have um, two, we have one in July and one in August for a three-day, two-night um, on horseback and, and camping and being in the wilderness. And then we have a two-night, two-day, one-night. So um, I'll be happy to give you some information about that. But we had people from all over the world. We had a group from Norway who came in and did it. We, I also did a wildflower and horses riding workshop and uh, talk about wildflowers and the flower essence so you end up coming back with your own flower essence. But I have videos and everything online so it was an exciting year and so it's going to continue. And yes, I'm living my heart's desire right now. So if I had stayed there in stress and tried to hang on to everything, I would have probably been in the hospital. It would have put me in the hospital. So I let go and just had faith that all was going to work out perfect the way it needed to. And instead, I focused on my health, not, not so, uh, the material things that, that, you know, or all that stuff that was going on in my life. You know, so. I have information here on the Wild Women Wilderness Retreats. And also, you could go to wildwomenwildernessretreats.com and expand your horizons and experience yourself in a whole new way. So I'd love to see you come join us, and um, I'll have that information for you when we finish up with everything tonight. And just going to take a little short break here and get ready for our next segment. So changing with ease even during difficult times. So that's what I just was discussing here. So nature is a good example of managing stress in your life when you compare to the life of a tree. Wind is important for a tree's growth. The wind provides enough stress to strengthen the trunk of the tree. The roots grow deeper, providing a stronger, more secure foundation. The tree bends and sways, becoming more flexible, allowing it to thrive. So the tree does not judge the wind or complain about its burst of air. It accepts the winds of change. And so recently, I had a client of mine who I had mentioned this to. And it was so funny because we've had these big, huge winds that have been coming through lately and just knocking some trees over, right? And he said to me, he goes, I was thinking about you. And um, he goes, because I was watching some trees fall and some of the trees were standing. And so the thing was, is if you notice, the trees that have fallen were not strong enough to withstand the hard wind, the, the, the big winds that came through because they had been protected by other trees, okay? 
They had the protection of the other trees, so they were weaker, the ones that were protected from receiving some stress in their life. You know, um, think about this. You know, how many times with our kids, I, I, how many here have kids? Okay, you know, how many times do we try to protect them from getting in trouble or whatever, and we kind of take on their stuff? Do we do them a service? Okay, because when the big win comes, are they able to make it through on their own, or are they going to fall over? So this is a big, huge lesson. So when this um, client of mine mentioned this, I really started thinking about that whole scenario, because I wrote this, uh, this is in the beginning of my intro of my book, and because I always thought about stress, and then you, the people who were here earlier, when I read that uh, part out of um, the keys to Yeshua, you know, that whole thing about, you know, suffering and what that means to us, you know, it's about being in that inclusion. We, you know, we, it's, it's a part of our growth to have those experiences. How do you begin to harmonize your life when judgment has a profound influence on your life? Yeah, a lot of judgment in this world. Um, this has been my greatest obstacle to overcome. In fact, it is my contract in this lifetime. Um, I have some amazing mentors that I've been working with. One of them is Deb Shepard, who's out of uh, Denver. She's a psychic medium. She does cold cases and everything. And so I started working with her about a year ago to help me understand me better and what I was experiencing and how to learn to open up to these things. And one of the things that she <laughs> was telling me is, yes, there's a contract, you know, about the reason why I have the experiences I have is about judgment and how I have to stop judging myself first, start validating myself first, acknowledging myself first. Because I always wanted my mother to acknowledge me, <laughs> my family to acknowledge me. You know, and uh, when I finally realized I, it wasn't them that, I, that needed to acknowledge me, it was me who needed to acknowledge so me. So I learned to honor the uniqueness of others and see the good, the beauty, and the love within all things, including myself. What I see in you, I see in me. So um, one of the things that um, I, I have a good friend of mine um, who I kept my horse, Shiner, and that's the one who passed away. And my horse passed away in September um, of 2011, or 2010. Everything kind of, well, 2010 was a crazy year. And I used to ride the horse out in the Peaks Trails and all over the place here in Breckenridge. And one of the things my horse taught me, along with nature, was every time I went out, the flowers were amazing. And so when I would look out over the flowers, each time I went out, there was a new flower or there was something, you know, popping up. And what I noticed was, you know, every single flower, you know, there's a different color, a different shape, a different size, a different texture, a different smell. They're all different, yet they're all beautiful, right? Well, how about us human beings? We're the same way. You know, why can't we see the beauty in each one of us? So only you can harmonize your health. How can you harmonize your health? The body cannot be in a healing mode if it is in a stress mode, okay? Stress mode is, you know, a little like the strong winds that are coming through, right? That we put ourselves in, the fight or flight, the adrenaline, okay? The, the reptilian brain, they say, okay? So learning about who you are will help you move out of stress and into harmony. The more, the more you know about yourself, the more you empower yourself, the more you love yourself, the more you see the magnificence of who you are. So it's so important for you to get out there and really, you know, research and find out more about you because you're the one who makes a decision, you know, of, of, about who you are, you know, what you think about yourself and everything. You're the one who makes the difference. Tuning into your inner knowing and begin flowing. I like that. I like to flow. So when you begin to find what interferes with your happiness, joy, health, and well-being, harmony becomes your reality. Life begins to flow with grace and ease. You begin to let go of what others think. You stand in your own truth. You trust yourself, and you begin to make wiser choices. How many of you want to do that? How many of you want to, you know, when you make a choice, it feels good. Um, I had uh, my beloved, he said to me one day, he goes, he goes you you just trust everyone, don't you? And I go, well, you know, and I didn't know how to, because I wanted to say yes, but I knew that wasn't the truth, really. But the thing is, is what was it that I was trusting? 
And uh, so a couple days later, I came to him and I said, you know, what it is is I trust my choices. I trust that I won't put myself in a situation that is going to be hurtful for me. I trust the food that I put in my body is good for me. I make wise decisions because of trusting my choices. And that what makes a huge difference when you start trusting yourself and, your, and, and you start making wise choices. And you don't have to worry about what's in something or what this is and that is because your body actually easily, your intuition and your wisdom and your inner knowing starts showing up. You'll be like a horse that's out there grazing in the field and it goes around the local weed because it knows it's poisonous. It doesn't know it's poisonous. It feels the frequency that it's not supposed to eat that local weed, right? We're the same way. We have that same intuition to not do things that are bad for us. But we've been interfered with. We have interference from others, what other people think, what other people want us to do, what we should do, what we shouldn't do, all those things. It's time for us to start letting go of all that interference, that fear, a lot of it's fear, of others saying, oh, don't do that. I wouldn't do that. Okay, there is only one now. We all express our own experience or reality in the present and only moment of now. That was said by Adrian Cooper, who I love. He wrote Our Ultimate Reality, and I have that book out there. It's amazing. And I have links to all these things that will be on my website and everything, especially loving consciousness right now. I have some wonderful links. So the benefits of harmonizing your life. When you harmonize your life, you eliminate your stress, reduce your frustration, and improve your state of mind, your health. You become able to focus on the task at hand, be in the moment, and significantly improve your health and well-being. Oh, and it just goes on. You know, I just love it. <laughs> so we've heard this. The world is experiencing stressful, difficult times. 89% of adults describe experience high levels of stress. This guy's under some stress, don't you think? <laughs> Finish this off. Do you know over half complain um, of stress at least once or twice a week? And more than one in four said it occurred on a daily basis. So everybody's you know, complaining all the time about stress. It's a time for us to learn about what is causing this stress and uh, what's interfering you know, with our health and wellness. And then most report that they are under much more stress now than five or ten years ago. Are you stressed out and fearful of the future? So that right there can really interfere with your wholeness and your wellness. So one of the other things that um, I find that is getting in the way or um, supporting where we're at and supporting our stress and all those kind of things and I've been there before and I've talked about this earlier in this lecture is about how humanity connects through their suffering so I have this great video I want to share with you and uh, let's see if we can have a good time with that and um, I'm gonna get it going and uh, I'll check back with you as soon as this video is through possible. Not bad at all. All right. Nothing like a good glass of shuttle the shuttler. Hey, Dussar. Ah, you're right there, Obadiah. did right. <sighs> Who'd have thought 40 years ago that we'd be sitting here drinking Chateau de Chasselas? Oh, I would have been glad of the price of a cup of tea, then. Ah, a cup of cold tea. All right. All right. Without milk or sugar. Uh, or tea. Uh, <laughs> and out of a cracked cup at that. Yeah. We never had a cup. We used to drink out of a rolled-up newspaper. <laughs> the best we could manage was to suck on a piece of damp cloth. Uh, but, you know, I often think we were happier then, although we were poor. Because we were poor. Uh, My old dad said to me, he said, money won't bring you happiness, son. He was right. Uh, I was happier then. I had nothing. Uh, we used to live in a tiny, tumble-down old house with great holes in roof. House? You're looking to have a house? We used to live in one room, 26 of us. All there, no furniture, half the floor was missing, and we were all huddled in one corner for fear of falling. <laughs> room? You were lucky to have a room. We used to have to live in corridor. Corridor? 
Oh, I used to dream of living in a corridor. That would have been a palace to us. We used to live in a water tank on rubbish tip. Ah, every morning we'd be woke up by having a load of rotting fish dumped on us. House. Ah. Well, when I said house, I mean to our only hole in ground covered by a couple of foot of torn canvas. But it were house to us. Oh, well, we were evicted from our hole in the ground. We had to go and live in the lake. Hey, hey, you were lucky to have a lake. There are over 150 of us living in a small shoebox in the middle of the road. Cardboard box? Right. Oh, you were lucky. <laughs> we lived for three months in a rolled-up newspaper in a septic tank. Right. Every morning, we'd have to get up at six, clean out rolled-up newspaper, eat a crust of stale bread, then we'd have to work 14 hours at mill, day in, day out, for sixpence a week. Aye, and then we'd, when we'd come home, Dad would thrash us to sleep with his belt. Luxury. <laughs> we used to get up at three, clean the lake, eat a handful of hot gravel, then we'd work in mill for 20 hours for twopence a month, then we'd come home and Dad would beat us about the head and neck with a broken bottle, if we were lucky. Paradise. <laughs> we had it tough. I used to have to get out at shoebox at midnight, lit road clean, eat a couple of bits of cold gravel, work 23 hours a day at mill for a penny every four years, and when we and when we got home, Dad used to slice us in half with a bread knife. Right. <clears throat> we used to get up in morning at half past ten at night, half an hour, half an hour before we'd gone to bed. Eat a lump of poison. Work 29 hours a day at mill for an eight-year lifetime. Come home and each night Dad would strangle us and dance about on our graves. Aye, will you try and tell that to the young people of today? <laughs> will they believe you? No. no. Of that. So, I mean, how many of you, I mean, um, I remember going to, this was about, four years ago or whatever, and, and um, I went to a barbecue. And everybody there, you know, was, of course, I have two boys, so um, everybody there had boys and everything. And they were, everybody was telling a story about what their kids had done wrong. And one would up the other with what their kids were doing wrong. And I was like going, whoa, this is really, you know, I mean, be talking about what your kids do wrong, you know, and I was thinking, oh gosh, my kids had just gone into city market, ate some sushi and walked out and didn't pay and got arrested, you know, so everybody goes, so, uh, you know, tell us about your kids and what they did wrong, and I just couldn't participate in that, you know, but, you know, that, that whole thing, and I don't mean it, you know, because I, I had, I had been there, you know, I have been there, and sometimes I catch myself there, you know, still today. But I remember just thinking to myself, wow, because I had been listening to everybody, and I'm like going, you know, I'd rather be talking about what my kids are doing good, you know. And I just said, well, they learned their lesson. Yeah, they did get in some trouble, but they learned their lesson, and hopefully that they'll move on from there, you know, that they, they, they got that life lesson. So I'd like to think of them that way. So, I mean, and so how many times do, do we just go into it, and we keep digging things deeper and deeper and deeper and carrying that energy of suffering? You know, I mean, that's how we connect with one another. What would happen if we connected e to each other through our happiness and joy and our love? Yeah, I think it'd be cool. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, stress can be linked to 95% of illness and cause the following side effects. We know there's so many, so many out there. List goes on. Stress can cause insurmountable damage to your health. So 75 to 90% of visits to primary care physicians are for stress-related problems. Most of our health issues are, you know, about stress, how we s perceive life. So I'm just going to flip through these a little bit since we have, you know, one of the important things here I do want to stop, our children are affected by depression. And are we stressing our children out? Is, are, are we causing uh, some of that? Well, in 2010, there was a study done and this is what we talk about frequency, okay? And I'm getting ready to share with you about how we connect with one another. Um, they found that children, whether they heard, you know, had heard the family, you know, stress that's going on, but they actually felt their parents being stressed out, okay? They didn't have to hear it or anything like that. 
they were in it. They were part of it. They could feel it in the home. And so the report that was done in 2010 um, is your stress affecting your kids well-being and this report is how children feel when their parent is stressed and it was really interesting what is our stress doing to our kids well-being a recent study reported in the Los Angeles Times indicates that children may be more aware of and more reactive to mom and dad's stress level than previously suspected. Even very young children, which the study defined as those under the age of eight, reported increased feelings of sadness, worry, and frustration due to their parents' stress. I mean, it, this is amazing. Um, we need to really look at ourselves and start teaching our children how to love themselves through us loving ourselves. We're showing our kids how to worry and stress rather than showing them how to love themselves. We have Rosie here. Some of you have tried Rosie. How many of you? have met Rosie. You know, whoever wants to come up, come up, because this is even more fun with more people, because we can do it with all of you. Who, anybody want to come up? I need at least five. Okay, come on up. Yeah, you're good. Come on. Don't be shy. Take an adventure. Get your butts up here. Okay. So I'm going to pick you two, okay? And um, so go ahead and grab her. And what I want you to do is when you hold her, you need to put your little thumb right there. And you put your thumb there. She's okay? the hockey doll. She's the hockey doll. Have you heard the story about the hockey doll? Yes, we'll tell you a story. So go ahead and hold her hand. Go ahead and hold hands. Hold hands. And okay, you two over there, drop your hands. Okay. Hook them back up. Okay, hook back up. Okay, do you mind if I touch your face? So. <laughs> but watch. <gasps> our clothes absorb 75% of our energy, okay? So, bring back. Okay. That's Rosie. She teaches. We're all energy. We're all connected. So, I'll tell you a little story. You know about the hockey story. Uh, Rosie, I teach also peak performance and team performance and how to work together and that your energy and what you bring into the team or you bring into your home, such as we saw, you know, the things that happen with your children, um, you can feel it. You know, you might not know it. It's kind of, you know, because we're, again, we're interfered, the interference. But um, Rosie, so I brought her in because the team, this, uh, the hockey team, the high school hockey team here, uh, this was five or six years ago, um, you know, were just having a difficult time getting started, and they weren't connecting or anything. So the coach came to me and heard that I did a little bit of team performance stuff. So Rosie came with me, and it was on a Thursday, and the team had just gotten off the ice when I went into the, um, the locker room, ah, you talk about energy. Oh, it was horrible, horrible. And um, I just remember going in there and, you know, all the hockey players around, but, and, you know, the, they had just gotten off the ice, so their energy was expansive. So anyways, I bring the doll in there, and I go, oh, a doll. Well, anyways, as we got in the circle to, to hold hands and get, you know, this is the time when I learned that I shouldn't be the one holding her because as we all started to connect, the kids didn't even have to touch hands and she would start singing because their energy was so expanded from their bodies that they would get into each other's energy field and she would sing without them touching. It was the coolest thing. And it was, I was blown away. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And um, so anyways, another miracle at that time was they kept saying to me, you got a, you got a little you know, button on her. And I go, I don't have a button on her. But high school hockey boys played with her for about 
an hour or two before I could get her back. And then um, she ended up being their mascot and went along with them. And then I had to take her to go to one of my uh, lectures. And so I got her back. And um, when I uh, took her away, they actually, so they started winning. They started winning all their games after that. And it was just their knowledge about, you know, how they connect. And, and I wanted to make that very clear to them. But when I took the doll away, they lost. <laughs> and so the uh, coach came back to me and said, can I have the doll back? <laughs> And so I gave it back to him, and, um, and uh, so I said to him, though, as I gave it back to him, I said, did you ever see the movie Dumbo? Like, Dumbo didn't need the feather to fly. He already could. <laughs> so I said, Remem remind your team of that, because it's not about the doll. The doll isn't what's making you win. So that's, you know, a, just a great story. She's been awesome. I love her so much. So be you. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. That is your greatest accomplishment. This is said by Ralph Waldo Emerson. When I found this quote, one of my first lectures, I said this because I finally started feeling, wow, I, it, it's time for me to stand in my own truth. And, you know, it's just, it's, I just love it. <laughs> so, not so highs of hypertension. So, there's all these statistics. And I'm just going to kind of roll through this a little bit. Um, it's no wonder we have so many problems. Our diet is abysmal. The thing about diet, though, you guys, you know, we, we're given so, you know, about calories and this and fat and that and blah, 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 Or our food is all dead. You know, we're eating dead food. We're not, you know, it's about, is your food live? That's what you should be looking at. And if you're going to eat anything, bless it blessings okay it's about thank you so much for whoever was a, brought this to my table bless your you know anything that you're eating because everything has a consciousness so there's a great book um, the source field investigations I love that book because it really brings out information about consciousness and about plant life and you know eat, a lot of people have this thing against you eating meat and everything because it's so much better to eat vegetarian because of the consciousness thing. Well, guess what? Your plant that you're eating has a consciousness too and reacts to what goes on and how you treat it. So um, they did it, one of the studies, and this wasn't, I don't think, in the source field investigations, but I had heard about this uh, previous, where they did, uh, they hooked the, the plant up to um, where it, it got the vibration of, of it, its, its sensory. And, um, they had brought a bunch of people in, and so the plant was really, you know, they could monitor that it was really relaxed and everything. And then in the conversation, it started rising up, and someone got angry, and all of a sudden the plant started, you know, in the, in the what it was connected to, it started showing that it was getting nervous. And then everybody left the room, but also right next to the plant was a goldfish. And what they did is they had the guy come back in who started the, the issue, and he came in like he was really pissed off, and he picked the goldfish out of the thing, and they had boiling water on a little thing there, and he took the goldfish and dropped it in the boiling water. Mm -hmm. The plant went off. The plant went crazy. And so, and there's so many in the source field investigations, you know, he has um, all these investigations they did over numerous years of how plants react to their environment. So, you know, you know when they're talking about how, um, you know, chicken are, you know, taken care of, you know, and that's why we've switched to, um, what is it called, uh, yeah, free range and everything. You know, it's because they're in a happier environment, right? You know, talk about that, the, the, the type of meat that's out there that they massage the cows. What is that? Colby? Col yeah. Um, well, guess what? We need to think the same way with our plants and everything. Even our plants, our house, they respond to how we're feeling in our, our lives, just like our pets, everything else. So Mother Earth, she is sensing all that. Okay, just like I said earlier, you know, she breathes. Mother Earth breathes. All right, obesity is on the rise. Again, you know, this is about judgment. This is about comparing ourselves. This is about what we've been brought into this world. Um, it's not as much about the food we eat. What matters, you know, we say food matters. There's a movie that came out, Food Matters, about raw food. It awesome, awesome. Um, movie. But the thing is, is 
food isn't what, th that's not the main thing that matters. What matters is you, what you feel about yourself. When you're eating something, guess what? If you have guilt about what you're eating, it's the guilt that causes the problem, not the food that you're eating. You know, it's, it, that's something that's an issue. When we start comparing ourselves to others out there, that's, that's, you know, that's judgment, that's judging ourselves, we're saying we're not enough. And this is what happens, is, is the uh, obesity. I actually did, um, about 10, 12 years ago, I did a um, six-day um, intensive human dissection workshop. And during that, it, it was transformational for me. It changed my life as far as how I do my work, as far with, and it helped me feel energy. And a lot of people say, you know, how can you feel energy, you know, when you're working on a dead body, right? Well, the thing is, when you're done working on a dead body and you feel a live body, you feel the difference, okay? You feel every single level. So the other part of that was everywhere you went that you knew that you could see trauma, there was a fatty layer there. The fat tissues go there. It goes there to protect the body. Our fat is about protection, okay? We're always protecting ourselves. That fear that we've been giving, guilt, shame, all those things, is about protection. That protective layer keeps us warm, all those things. What would life be like without good health and wellness? I know some of you already know. I know that. I experienced that in my youth, in my childhood, when I was being abused. And I've experienced it at other times, whenever I'm under stress. So the questions I would like and encourage you to ask yourself is, number one, is your health important? Number two, do you value your health? Number three, do you believe you are responsible for your health? And number four, would you like to know how to harmonize your body so that each morning when you wake up and start your day, your body feels youthful and energetic. Would you like to know how to get to that point where you feel that way? This is why I am sharing information with you because I have studied this. I have had these experiences in my past and I recognize and decided to find out why I was able to overcome my illnesses and bring myself to a place of health, comfort, and joy in my life. And by learning about myself and what makes me happy, what makes me healthy, I'm able to share this information with you. I am of loving service and I offer you wellness education and coaching. So to end with that, go to my website, Loving Consciousness, and you can find more about my packages and the type of products, services, and resources that I offer you to help you with your health, comfort, and joy. So this is the end of the segment about suffering and wellness and <laughs> the nature of who you are. And we're ready to move on to more information on supporting the nature of who you are, energy that you are, that we just found out through Rosie. So we're going to learn more about how sound creates. We're going to learn about Monsuro Moto and the healing powers of water. We're going to learn about conscious language. We're going to learn about Sherry Edwards and how the sound of your voice can tell the state of your health. So much more to come, and I'm really looking forward to you joining me to further this series on the Nature of Things to Come 2012 so that you can know more about your magnificent self.